As many of you know, one year ago, we lost one of the dearest members of our Chronicle family. Mary Richardson, who graced this program with her elegant storytelling, her intellect, and her charm, passed away after a battle with Alzheimer's disease. A program devoted to her career in the days after her passing was one of our most viewed programs of the year, leading us to quip that Mary could always deliver ratings. Indeed, she had a profound impact on this program and all of us. More fat, not less in your diet. Mary Richardson's chronicle career spanned 26 years and a lifetime of stories. In many ways, Mary shaped and defined Chronicle after joining the show in 1984. She brought her news instincts and her gift for storytelling, and it was a perfect fit. She was at home with everyone, young and old alike, politicians, chefs, farmers, and the young people she always found time to mentor. In her words, everyone has their story to tell. She was uh, one of the smartest, most generous people I ever knew. Her longtime co-anchor, Peter Mahegan. Mary and I had a lot in common. I mean, we, we grew up in the same kind of family. We, you know, our dads were Navy guys. We were proud uh, to be Irish. So I, I think that was part of the spark that worked for us. Mary's husband, recently retired Chronicle senior producer, Stan Levin. She was a force in motion. She was a, just a, an exuberant person who loved people, and she was always gracious. You know, we just came in our family to accept, we share Mary, you can't contain Mary. For centuries, Galway on the Watching West that exuberance and vitality diminish as her illness progressed was hard for all who loved her, but no one, most especially Stan, ever left her side. Her friends, our family, uh, Chronicle family have walked with me through this journey the entire way. And in an interview just before Mary's passing, Peter reflected on the last time he saw his friend and colleague. I felt like there was some spark there. There was some flicker <laughs> of recognition, I think. You know, just uh, uh, looking her in the eye and her looking back at me as we had done all those years. I could feel something, and I think she did too. Uh, so, it's been tough. Needless to say, the world has changed in the past 40 years. Physically, Boston in many ways looks like a different city than it did back in 1982. When this bridge wasn't here, this twice renamed building was still more than a decade from being built, and the original garden still stood here in all its stuffy, sweaty splendor. But nothing sums up the changed physical face of Boston more than the actual 15-year facelift that removed and depressed the former central artery. We covered the infamous Big Dig, then the largest public works project ever from its very beginning. Above ground, below ground, year round, and on one occasion, around the clock. What the surface of the central artery will look like once the Big Dig is over is not yet entirely clear. How much will be green? How much will be developed? Are still very big questions. Big questions that began to be answered when the 17-acre Greenway opened in 2008. But 40 years of changes here go far beyond the physical. New titles were won and um, lost, foreshadowing perhaps the sweetest of all sports moments on opening day 2004 at Fenway Park. A young fan called it for me straight up. They gonna win it all? Yeah. And so they did. The new titles extended elsewhere too. With its widening diversity over the past 40 years, Boston has become majority minority. And in 2021, three centuries of Mr. Mayor gave way to Madam Mayor. But away from the cities, out in the hills and the woods and the main streets and back roads of New England, Chronicle has continued to be just as keen on what hasn't changed. Chronicle has never stopped capturing the sights and sounds, and yes, tastes, 
all of which make this region so unique and beloved. The truth is, out here, it can sometimes feel that the only change has been in who's on the road, or off, or high above it. But day after day, decade after decade, we've been out here, from the tops of her mountains to the heart of her cities, 40 years of telling the stories of New England, all the while keeping up with what's changed and keeping faith with what hasn't. <laughs>